But uh, I'm going to do this this quick video because I think that there's a lot of folks who don't really understand fully what a 401k is. And I'm going to try and explain what it is not. So you can take this for what is for so you can take this for how this how this works out but a 401k is not a savings account um let me explain here every brokerage account i've ever signed that i've ever done business with they all say somewhere in bold italicized underscored all caps it says something to the effect of you understand the risks of investing and that this is an investment, not a savings account. And that, you know, you as an investor understand that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And investors can and do lose some, all, or more of their original investment. Now, that's not everybody, right? That's not how 401k works because it's not really designed for you can risk more than, it's not a margin account. But understand that when you're putting money into it, you're putting money into the stock market. When you put money into the stock market, what ends up happening is that you run the risk of... It, you understand that you can lose that money. What happens is money goes in there and then it's used. And what happens is, is that it actually expands the, the, the market beyond what, in, what actual investors would, would, in, would do. So I don't want to get too far afield on this, but in a nutshell, when, when you invest in a company, the idea is that you're actually buying a piece of that company. In other words, you understand the company, you understand what it is that you're doing, and you understand that you're giving, you know, Bob, who has a company, you're going to give Bob some money to invest in his business. And because you believe that business actually is profitable, and it's going to make a return, and because you're going to make a return, you're going to be able to get a piece of the upside. That's the idea behind investing. You, with, again... I can't, I can't stress this enough. It's with the understanding that you can lose money, that the investment may not actually work, that his business model may fail. And that's the part that's being kind of left out. It's like, well, but we're going to put it in the stock market and it's going to be just, there's this kind of thing that got that uh, this diversification idea that got pushed out there. And I remember being in corporate America a long time ago for me and where that kind of got pushed. And the challenge is, is that like, yeah, if you think that the markets are always going to go up, right? Remember, one of the challenges that we have right now is the market is not going up. Now, I know that there's a bunch of money being printed and shoved into the in, into the stock market to make give the illusion that's going that, that everything is going well, but we're regressing to the mean for reasons that I'm not going to go into in this in this particular video. You can go find my older work and you can look at the the, the birth rate and the demographic shift that's happening. It has nothing to do with race. It has to do with just people not having kids. And we're regressing back to the mean. You know, the, the challenge with the idea of, of everything going up is it requires everything to go up. If it's not going up, well, then you're going to end up going backward. And so this, this theory is, is with the 401k is that you're going to make enough money or that, you're, that when you go to retire, you're going to have all this extra money and you're going to be able to retire and do what you want to do. Well, what happens if, if the economy starts regressing. What happens if it starts slowing down? Well, then all of a sudden your returns start slowing down. And then of course they have to start printing money. And when they print money, they shove it into the markets, which devalues your spending power. You're, you're never going to get ahead of the inflation curve is, is kind of what I'm telling you. And that's just, that's math that I'm not going to do in this video, but the, the math, it doesn't work like that. You're never going to grow. You're never going to outgrow it. And that's because you're your your currency, whenever 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 someone offers you a return, they have to actually go and make a greater return to give you a return. So, and that works if you're expanding the economy. Now you can say like, well, what's expanding the economy? The economy is one thing. It's people. That's it. That's all an economy is. An economy isn't a building. It's not a stock market. It's not. It's not a broker. It's not a. It's not a bunch of guys on the phone screaming buy and sell orders. That's not what an economy is. An economy is just people. It's just you, me, average folks doing business together. That's it. You know, you hire me to, to, to fix the electrical in your house, right? Or whatever, okay? Or, or to do plumbing work or to whatever, whatever it is that I'm doing or fix your car. And we, we agree on an exchange and I show up and do it. That's all an economy is. It's just people engaged in commerce. That's it. And when you're adding lots of people, in other words, you're having, you're cranking out lots of kids. Your economy is expanding because, because the amount of people is expanding. Well, when that contracts, 
right? When it regresses back to the mean, because most people, most people now aren't even, birth rate is 1.63 last time I looked. And it's probably going to be down to the 1.4 range, you know, in another, I would say, eight years. Probably not even that. It probably won't even take that long. Um, so when that kind of thing happens, uh, you're going to have the economy has to naturally go down. Well, nobody wants anything to go down. They want it to go back up, right? This is uh, the people at the airport Marriott that have went, that fall for these scams to go buy rental real estate. I'm going to get rich in rental real estate. Like, it, it's just, I, I've been over this a dozen times. It doesn't work like that. You, 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 you don't make, you're not entitled to a profit. Let me just clear this up. You can, you're entitled to make a profit, but you're not entitled to a profit. In other words, the reason why you would make money as a, let's, let me just, let me attack landlords for a second here is because you, you went and looked at hundreds of deals on paper. And then out of those hundreds of deals, you may have found one that was worth going to look at, right? And out of maybe that one, maybe one in 10 of those is actually worth buying because you can provide, how do you earn a profit? You earn a profit by providing a better product at a better price and, you know, uh, and, or better service, right? Than somebody else is. That's how you earn a profit. You're not entitled to said profit. You earn said profit. And you do that because you, you, you bought at the right price, right? Remember you make, you make your money on your buy, not your sell. You know, that's, I, I'm not going to get into all that, but, but that's what happens. So if you go to look at a, at a, at a house that you like, any idiot can show up and pay retail for a house and jack the rents. Any retard can do that. That's not that hard to do. That's that's just finding some bank willing to write the paper on it, um, you know. But if you're but if you're actually trying to 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 run it like a business, well, then what you have to do is you have to buy it at a lower price, so that that way when the economy regresses back to what it should be, you're still profitable on the way down. And that's the part that everybody didn't. Everybody missed that at the airport Marriott. Okay, all you guys went to the airport Marriott and leveraged a bunch of money and, and maxed out your credit cards to pay some goon 50,000 bucks to tell you how to buy rental real estate so you can get rich. A bunch of you did that, right? And it's coming back to haunt you now because all those prices have priced themselves completely out of the market. You, it's like, well, yeah, it's, I mean, what do you expect is going to happen? And this is where this idea comes from of the entitlement to the profit. Well, the 401ks is no, it's no different than this. So Staying, I don't want to get too far afield, but I want to bring it back. So when you have it, when you have a 401k, when you're putting money into the markets, you're hoping that everything's going to continue to go up. But what happens when it doesn't? And that's what a lot of people are seeing right now. And you're going to see even more of that. The feeding frenzy hasn't happened yet. Um, eventually, that's going to happen. That's coming. The feeding frenzy is going to be when people finally realize that that they need to take their money out before they lose it. Uh, or before it's completely not worth anything. Let me do it this way. If a company says, hey, uh, it will, you know, we'll match your 401k contributions, right? Okay, now what if you were to say to the company, all right, well, what's my maximum contribution? What, what can I max it out at? Well, we'll, max, we'll, we'll match it everything up to $1,000 a month, let's say. Okay. I, I don't know what the numbers are. It's going to be different from every, from every company, I'm sure. But let's say that you say, I'm going to, I want to max out my, my contribution to a thousand dollars a month. And they say, yeah, we'll match that every single month too, or we'll match that contribution to your 401k. Like, okay. So you've admitted that you have a thousand dollars more a month that you could actually be paying me. Right. In, in other words, you, you kind of see where I'm going with that? Like, okay, so if you're admitting that you have a thousand extra dollars a month, why don't you just pay me a thousand dollars more a month for my for my labor and for my time and for my skills? Why don't you just do that? If you've got a thousand dollars a month that you can max out of my 401k, well, then you've proven to me that you have a thousand dollars a month that you could just pay me right now. Think of your life, and I've again, I've been over this probably a dozen times too. Think of your life like a business, right? What does a, how does it work when you when you hire anybody, any professional service? It doesn't make any difference who it is. How does it work? At the time of service, they expect you to write a check. They expect you to pay for it, right? Because you've, you've done something for them. So, so let's say that you're a, I don't know, a, a sprinkler guy, okay? You, you install sprinkler systems. When you're done with the sprinkler system, you know, you go to the homeowner and say, okay, hey, I'm, I'm done. Um, you owe me 3,300 bucks or whatever it is, okay? So you need to, you know, now, you, now the, would you, it would be unreasonable, right? If you, if the homeowner were to say, well, hold on a second here, I'm going to give you $300 now, but then 40 years from now, when you go to retire, aside from receiving total consciousness, you're also going to, I'm going to give you like $8,000. Most businesses 
business owners, I will tell you from personal experience, I know lots of business owners. There's lots of guys like me out here. That, well, not like me, but there's lots of guys out here in business. And they, are, they would all say, no, thank you. Um, you kind of need to pay me right now. I've, you know, I've done the work. I've completed everything. I, I fulfilled my end of the contract. So, so now you're going to have to, you know, going to have to, uh, you know, pay up. I'm going to adjust this a tiny bit. So you want to be paid for your, for your time. You want to be paid for, for your time, your effort, your energy, your work, your skill, your know-how, all that kind of stuff. You're, you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm a businessman too. I need to be, need to be paid. Start thinking of your life like that. The 401k is a, is a sales pitch. Just like retirement itself. Retirement is a sales pitch. You understand? Um, I don't think anybody really understands. Retirement's a relatively recent idea in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. Most people didn't do a, a, re, a, a quote, retirement kind of thing. They, they just, they got older and they started doing other things. They started doing things that weren't as physical. This is particularly true for men. Retirement was a, was a sales pitch. So back in the day, you had guys who had farms. And what, what, in order to get those guys off the farm, you had to offer them something more than what they had on the farm. So if you had a farm, let me think about it this way. What if you were in the situation right now where you had five acres, 10 acres, actually let's use 10 acres. That's a, that's a nice even number. You have 10 acres of land and you're kind of self-sufficient. You don't really need anything. You don't have any debt. Let's say you have no property taxes, no income taxes, nothing. You're just, you're, it's, it's old school, you know, it's the West, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, you're just out living your life, doing your thing. And you know, a businessman comes by and says, Hey, you need to come work for my company, come can work for my company. Like, well, okay, but why would I want to leave this and then go into your, into town and work at a company in a, in a, in a hot, on a hot, sweaty mill all day long? Well, because you only have to do that for 40 years. And after 40 years, I'm going to give you this big retirement and you're gonna have a lot of money and then you can do whatever you want. And like the, again, the idea behind retirement is just that you can go do what you want to do and you can use your time the way you want to. That's it. I mean, I've been over this before, but that's all retirement is. It's just you being able to say, hey, I want to be able to do something that I want to do with my life, right? That's that's it. Most men spend their lives doing work for everybody else. And then what happens is, is they get to a point where they can say, okay, hold on. I want to be able to do something for myself. It, a lot of that stuff would happen a lot earlier, right? If you were making all of your money right now, right? Now, for those of you out there who... who um, who don't understand the marshmallow test. I've been over, I've dissected that bullshit marshmallow test um, many times over and it's crap. All of the psychologists out there, all of you out there who, who are pop psychologists and internet philosophers. I mean, there's tons of you out there. Uh, the marshmallow test is bullshit. I've debunked it repeatedly. It is not, it is not a real thing. It's a way to convince you. It's a sales pitch. It's a way to, it's a way to get you to work now and then be paid sometime maybe in the future as long as everything goes okay, right? That's assuming that they don't eat the marshmallow before the 10 minutes is up, right? Well, I've been over this and this is, this is what's happening is that a lot of you are, you know, you're, you're thinking that, oh, it's, it's going to be great. I'm going to retire. I'm going to have all this money. That's assuming they don't spend all your money or just take your money before you get there. And that's going to become a problem here very shortly because but these companies are not profitable. Most of these companies are not profitable. When you're moving into a post-profit world, the reason that's happening, when you buy down, you're, when you try to buy business by just lowering your price and competing solely on price, you, you, can, you can volume yourself right out of business. And a lot of these big companies, they've done a lot of volume. They've brought in a lot of customers and they've done it at a huge amount of expense. And the, the expense was their profit. Because the small businesses can't compete with that. They're like, oh, well, but that's capitalism. No, 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 no. Not if you're subsidizing it, my friend. Not if you're subsidizing Not if you're making a bunch of crazy-ass tax laws that say that people have to put money into, in, into the stock market to gamble their money in the stock market to subsidize a bunch of unprofitable chicken shit companies. That's, there's nothing capitalist about that, my friend. That's, I don't know what you would want to call that. If you want to call it capitalism, that's fine. But, I mean... I advocate for free markets and hard currency, and I get called a communist, which is fucking weird to me, but whatever. I mean, people, people are fucking crazy nowadays. I'm starting to wonder if people are becoming illiterate. I'm like, like genuinely functionally illiterate is what I'm actually, I'm wondering with a lot of folks. So anyway, the 401k is a sales pitch. It's an idea of getting you 
And it's just like you need pensions, by the way. This 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 applies to city pensions. It applies to, to government pensions. And it, it doesn't make any difference what it is. Military pensions, all of it. All of it is in, in the same category. It's designed to get you to work now and then be paid later on with devalued chicken shit fiat garbage currency. Rather than you saying, no, I'll take all of mine right now because, see, then the, then the relationship is voluntary. See, I don't, you don't have anything to hold over me anymore. You don't have any, you have no hold over me any longer. I can just leave anytime I want. You piss me off. You run a shitty, you should want to get your pay. You should want to be paid for the, for the, for the work you're doing. You want to be paid upfront, you know, at, at the, at the time of service. So if you work for one week, then you get your, you get your money and then you just take your money and you go invest it. And, you know, if you want to invest it, gamble it away, go to the casino, whatever you want to do, that's fine. If you want to save it, then you go ahead and save it. Um, savings means no risk. Just so you know, the difference between a 401k or any kind of any type of money market account versus savings. OK, those are two very different things. Savings means no risk. Investing means risk. Like, well, but there's a bigger return. Well, that's because the currency's worthless. I mean, one of the fastest ways to become really rich is just to not lose money. That's for real. If you can just not get ripped off all the time and not have your money devalued, you don't have to really do anything to get rich other than just not lose any money. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of it. You can just you can work and save your money, and then uh, as as you get older, then you can just decide, okay, I'm going to retire. I have enough money saved up that I can go do what I want to do now with the rest of my life. I can go hang out, and I can go do all my hobbies, all this all the sports that I wanted to go do. You know, when I when I was when I was working, but I couldn't do them because I'm working. So I want to go do something else. You know, go 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 fly a plane, go aviation. I don't know. I mean, it's that's an expensive hobby. Um, you know, bowling. Maybe you want to get good at bowling. I don't know. Whatever it is, but it's like, but that's just it. So. The, the, so the idea of to, just to, just to, to hammer this 401k thing, because I think we're going to see more and more of this that's coming up, is sooner or later, folks are going to have to realize that you're you're probably going to get hosed if you keep your money in these in these systems. You're you're you're. I mean, I'm just telling you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm I'm just telling you. Um. You you probably should consider getting a bit more direct control over your money. And so that's my 401k rant. We'll see you next time.